Yeah. Money never sleeps, pal. Just made 800,000 Hong Kong gold that's been wired to you. Play with you. You done good, but you gotta keep doing good. I showed you how the game works. Now school's out. Mr. Gecko, I'm there for you 110%. Happy New Year, everybody. This is Kai Whitney with Redbridge Capital Consulting. I uh, wanted to wish you the, the very best in your ongoing trading, investing futures, and obviously your life as well. Hope it all goes well this year. If you learned anything from last year, it was never fight the tape. Don't fight what the big institutions are doing. And as it says here on my website, if you're tired of buying that next hot indicator of software, it's not about the software. It's all about the process. And the process that I teach is how to follow institutional money flow or order flow as, as it's being called these days. But I was taught a long time ago, it's all about the money. It's those in the know who are the, versus those who are not. And those who are in the know are always gonna position themselves appropriately based upon probabilities. And I wanna give just a couple examples uh, today is January 3rd, 2020, okay? Uh, we just had overnight um, Iran spike in oil, or, excuse me, um, some drone strikes, took out some guy, who cares? Spiked oil up 4%. But today is the opportunity that actually I could sell uh, versus buy. So when everyone's saying, oh, if they close the Vermeer Strait or whatever it's called, it's jumped $100 a barrel, who cares? That's just That's just guessing, that's predicting. That has nothing to do with, anything. What you need to do is be better positioned. And I want to show you a couple things here real quickly because um, because it just came out in Bloomberg that uh, that there was a bullish bet that surged ahead, the highest since 2018, ahead of the Iran airstrike. And and I, I, I just typed here, someone always knows. And that's why I track institutional money flow. So I want to take a little bit of a moment here to talk about institutional money flow and basically what's called tracking volume imbalances in order flow or otherwise known as heavy volume. And all this does is indicate that there are big money traders, hedge funds, pension funds, mutual fund managers, large institutions, governments either putting a lot of money to work or, or unwinding a position. Basically, all the people that are in the know, okay? So if you and I, were not in the know, we're never going to know. We're never going to be on the inside. There's always going to be someone else. So what we want to do is we, want, we don't want to make our bets based upon what they're saying they're going to do. We want to make their bets on what they actually do. And the best way to track that is through large orders that come through either through the commitment of traders reports, but that's obviously a weekly report uh, from the CBOT. Um, you can get you can get that through cbot.org or .gov, excuse me, or sec.gov. But anyway, you can look at insiders, but they're gonna report later. They, they have up to a month to report their position sizes. But if you track the day-to-day -day transactions and you keep track of that, you can, you can accumulate better levels of which to trade from, and therefore you have better probabilities. And so what I wanna do is I wanna go through just a quick example. Um, but first, let me tell you, I, I'm not a know-it-all. I've just been in the business for a long time. I've been on the other side, the institutional side. I've managed accounts. You know, I've, I've, I've worked with the best of the best in the hedge funds and the money managers. I actually brought them the ideas, obviously through distributions and stock buybacks and corporations, you name it, I've been all there. Private equity, venture capital, investment banking, trading, period. So I'm just giving you my experience. It's all in my humble opinion. Whatever you do, don't take a trade based on what I tell you to do now or ever. Always learn to do your own homework. And so here's a little bit of that on how you can do it yourself, okay? All you're trying to do is you're trying to align yourself with the big money because here's an example here where I tweeted this December 9th, okay? And everyone remembers, and if you don't, that's fine. 
Every, but most of people remember my market call last December 2018 when the market was quote unquote in the worst December sell-off in the history of the markets. Well, obviously, that was the opportunity to buy, okay? And so that's when I posted the buy the dip is in full effect through financials. And you want to go towards whatever what the institutions are going to reach for. They're going to reach for the most liquid, diverse names, okay? They have to go for the liquidity because of their size that they need to put to work. One of the things that you want to watch is private equity. And the reason why you want to watch private equity is because there's so much cheap money out there chasing so few deals, okay? Notice how, for instance, notice how the IPO market in 2019 was just horrible. If you got a call from, from your broker and offered you IPO stock, odds are that stock tanked right on you and you're left holding the bag. But who did? make the money. It was the private equity and the venture capital. Then they priced it for the public and the public is left holding the bag. So you never want to be the public. You never want to put a position on as a public trader, a retail trader. So anything that you see in the news, you don't want to react to that. You can almost want to think of doing the opposite, to be honest. So this is a quick chart that uh, back in December, we have the uh, private equity and you're always going to look at something relative to something else so I, t I pull up the private equity and i and i create a ratio between private equity and the s p 500 which is the most liquid market and what i'm looking for are imbalances in orders that are coming through in the private equity versus s p and when we see upticks in that opportunity in, in upticks in the underlining asset which would be uh, private equity in this case you have opportunities. So here, December, uh, specifically, it was December 24th, and then it confirmed on January 4th, and that's when I quoted, and here's uh, Jan 4th, right here. It says here, buy the dip is in full effect for financials in 2019. And I put a chart up that showed that each buy the dip opportunity since the Great Recession of 2008 let me blow this up for you. And this is going to look kind of cruddy. Let's see if I can get it straight. We have the lows of 2008, 2009, 11. And I can't even read that anymore. That's 16. And here's 19. So at the same levels, the opportunities or probabilities for be, being a better buyer than your retail seller, you fared well. And if you took this approach, you were trading or investing alongside the same smart minds as private equity. And I also mentioned that here on December 9th, since December 9th, we've actually had a really amazing bull run. New all-time new highs after all-time new highs after all-time new highs, right? Everyone, and so I say here on December 9th, everyone remembers my buy the market call December 18th. Well, here's another opportunity as this December 19th is being led by the same private equity that bought last December. They also bought in August. They bought in October and they bought in November leading into December. So this December is follow through. Right now we're going to have a pause. We should get a pause. You never know, but... At these levels, we should get a pause because their initial buys were back in November, right? So we're going to see how this all plays out. And as of today, January 3rd, we got our first pullback, but it was just because of a, a drone strike, which is normally war is bullish anyway. So don't worry about that as far as long term. But we want to go through why private equity? Why follow private equity? And I want to show you December 9th is when I posted this on private equity. But as of January, here we go, January 2nd, this news article just came out from Bloomberg. It says private equity enters 2020 with a $1.5 trillion war chest. That is a lot of money. I don't even know what a trillion looks like. But that is just ridiculous. 
And that's a lot of money that's gonna have to be chasing deals. And that money is always gonna be chasing yield and they're gonna use leverage and it's all based upon probabilities. And that's why we wanna focus on this. So how do you do this on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Well, first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna obviously identify higher probability opportunities. You're not gonna just buy just because everything's selling off. The same way you wouldn't just buy the all-time highs just because it made a new all-time high or a breakout. How many times have you bought a breakout and it just reverses on you? Well, if you wanna stop doing that, you gotta be better prepared is all I'm trying to say. So the action that these institutions, specifically private equity, smart money, is going to do is they're gonna leave an imbalance in volume. And they're gonna to have to, what this action leaves is it's, it's, a, it's a very distinguished order flow footprint that can have an effect on the future price movement of a security or a market, whether it's the next 15 minutes or the next 15 or more days. But if you follow institutional money flow, you can determine whether you should be looking to buy something or to short it or just to adjust your risk. What it really signals is that those who track, such as myself, those who track institutional money flow is that there's a lot of inventory or supply to move. $1.5 trillion is gonna take a while to deploy, right? So if we go with, um, if we go with that, it may take hours or even weeks for large positions to accumulate or unwind. And big players, basically big institutions, they cannot get in or out of a position within the next five minutes or so. So it always, always dumbfounds me when retail traders come to me and they're pulling up five minute charts, three minute charts, minute charts. That really has no effect on anything. There's not a single institution that can do anything within that, period. So the market is not trading based upon chart patterns or candlestick patterns or anything else because that's all subjective. That's subjective to what you put onto your chart. What you need to think about is the bigger picture. How is that $1.5 trillion going to be um, accumulated or distributed over time? One of the things that you want to look at, I'm going to blow this up, see if it doesn't screw up too bad. You're gonna see here, this is a regular chart. I don't even know if it's a 30 minute chart or four hour chart, really it doesn't matter. I'm not even looking at the candlesticks, okay? I don't even see those. What I'm looking for are these boxes here, these orange cluster of sales. Let me see if I can blow this up even more. There's a cluster, a cluster of sales here and then you could see the, 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 the market retraces down, okay? There's a cluster of blue boxes representing buyers on the ask. These are representing sellers on the, on the I'm sorry, sellers on the ask, buyers on the bid, right? What we're looking for is over time, large transactions are telling you where the institutions are making their bets. Then we're looking for opportunities outside of those areas in the direction of the most recent buy imbalance or sell imbalance. And then you can project out into the future where these levels will react. So these clusters of sales initiated this, this, uh, this down trade here, right? Market finally found buyers down here below 3,076. This is an old chart, by the way. And that relates to this cluster of buyers back here in November 6th. So it was one, two, three days later they found buyers and it took it back to where the sellers were previously at. Sellers came in, there was also a buyer there, but the reaction is that it's traded down. Again, looking for the prior level of buyers. Or looking for the prior level of trapped large trades. And that's what we want to track over time. So over time, you want to have these ideas in your head. Okay, 30, 372, great level. There's, there's institutional transactions there, noted. Um, 3092, there's institutional transactions there, noted. What we would do as institutional traders is we would call our hedge funds who had the positions on the other sides, and we would offer them 
the opportunity to actually accumulate or distribute shares based upon how much volume had taken place in between. Obviously, we had our desks and we have our inventory to work with, so we had an advantage at that time. And I'm not talking to you from an institutional desk anymore. So what I'm using is available to everybody now. But again, it's all about the process. You have to understand what you're reading and learning before you actually get to there and understand. So let's continue a little bit. So if we go, if we, if you, if you just track this over a period of time, you'll far, you'll do a lot better because if you may have, you may have probably heard the term, you know, don't fight the Fed. An example is for currently, and for the last, I don't know, since 2016, the Fed's been buying into the repo, repo market, adding liquidity to the market. So you haven't wanted to be a long-term short this market for a very long time because the Fed is adding liquidity. You don't want to fight the Fed. And the reason is that they can just print as much money as needed to add liquidity to stabilize a market. And they're doing so so that institutions will take positions and institutions need liquidity. So it's a lot easier to avoid making big mistakes and taking large losses when the institutional money flow can bail you out. You can tighten your stops and your probabilities are better. And the best part about it is you could possibly stay in the trade even longer than you thought, as long as you stay with the institutional money flow. Now, of course, volume and balances, it's all relative on the security in the market that you're trading. For instance, the crude and the gold markets are gonna have less volume and liquidity, right, than the S&P markets. So, or, or the S&P markets, the futures markets, are gonna have less liquidity than the spiders. The, the SPY ETF or the SPY or the futures on the, uh, on the NASDAQ, for instance, are going to have less liquidity than Apple. Apple's going to have Apple stock, Apple company is going to have more liquidity. So institutions are going to move. They're going to hide what they're doing in the most liquid of instruments. And so you want to follow those. And what you're looking for by default, I use three to one, 300% increase in the aggressiveness of someone hitting the bid, which is an aggressive manner versus buying bid, which is a passive manner or lifting the offer, meaning they need to get in. They want to get in at, at, at a specific price because they have something to get done. And that's what, again, part of the process you need to fully understand. So how does this look on on a regular dome. Well, this is not a regular dome. This is the dome that I have set up. And what I had created is imbalances here, these boxes. These are imbalances in volume that I tracked. So I can look and see where a buy imbalance happened, where a sale imbalance happened, where a crossed, basically crossed market, cross trade happened, an auctioning market, where buyers, so if, if the buyers lift and the market comes back in to one of these buy imbalance areas, I can look for opportunities given this information. Again, this is tracking volume imbalances over time, all right? You don't need, trust me, you don't need a software to do this. Just take a legal pad and paper and just keep track of the information. But if you haven't seen a dome, if most of you trade charts, but this is what my, this is what my screen looks like. And just to read it out for you, this is the S&P. This is the, the price ladder on the left sides are the bids basically limit limit to bid 10 deep on the offer side limit to sell 10 deep and then what you're going to have is these pulling and stacking opportunities where you see where if, if you're at a price 1150 and they added 94 to equal 80 means there was actually a negative 14 here okay but you're looking for more than 94, more than 50. You're looking for large. Look at this large pull of orders. So when, so as an example, though, negative 1,400, negative 1,100, that could possibly mean that they missed the opportunity. And you're looking for this type of size to reload, to reload at different levels. Same on the, same on the pulling of the of the orders to offers to sell. They're either getting out of the way so the market can trade through. You know, obviously the market is going to trade towards liquidity, but if it's getting out of the way, price can actually trade through. 
and it's going to stop at large opportunities like 1456 would be a level as an example so maybe they deployed the 1422 and they said you know what i'm going to be a better seller up here at 1456. anyway i'm probably getting way too too deep into this but this is a better way to look at the markets obviously you have to have your levels established based upon what the big business is doing and how they're accumulating or distributing over time and then once you have that information then you can make a more pre precise trade with a higher probability and a, and a better risk to reward so that's that's what i teach in learning how to track all this information now i just wanted to show a couple more things um the last time we had an energy spike and you'll have to go through my twitter or youtube or whatever but the saudi spike so i'm going to go for, through crude real quick um and i want to show how okay here we go so i've got we've got this here that was what was that september right what you're looking oh here it is right here all right so back in August, we had so there was a downtrend and I know trend followers are going to be shorting, right? Or well, I'm looking for that, looking for the trap to where they flush. They flush these guys out. They trap them by taking it higher. They end up having to get out, and this is the opportunity to get in. Well, if you better position yourself near these levels, you can be pleasantly surprised as we as I was when you wake up and the Friday before it was like $54, you don't have to again go back to my video on the Saudi oil deal, the, the drone strike that happened there, and it gapped up and traded through to 63. 60, 60 to 63 is where I'm selling, where you know uh, firms are putting out stuff like uh, you know um, oil at 70 and higher and this and that. They're gonna they're gonna put that information out just as they pull the rug on you and it trades from 63 all the way back down to 52. Once you have another opportunity, a flush, downtrend flush, you have another opportunity to get in. So there's a number of ways you can obviously get in through options, ETFs, stocks, and then you could trade, you know, day trade crude, whatever you wanna do. Here's another example where we get in near back near the same levels we got in prior which was around 53 54s and you have opportunities to work through november and december and then you are pleasantly surprised on a day like today and this is where you're a seller you're selling on this price spike just as though you would be selling on a price spike lower you'd be getting out of a short getting out of longs here now i now again if you go back to the video on the saudi here I said the very first thing you want to do is look for liquidity coming in. The large size, large orders. That's going to tell you the direction. If this is going to be a continuation 270 on that same day or near term, or you're looking for large trades to come in, and it's going to show you a different direction. Same thing here. You're looking for trades to come in. Obviously, they're going to price this in. They're going to oil reserves are going to be released. Who knows what's going to happen? I heard $100 if they close. It doesn't matter. Whatever they're talking about, who cares? What are they doing? What are the large trades coming in doing? And that's what you want to track. You want to track that over time. So this obviously is not going to do that. You're going to need to actually take note, take a legal pad out. You're going to need to keep track. And remember, this is how I had to do it well before there was any of these programs and stuff that's what we did we just tracked large orders but we also had we also knew obviously the other trading desks where the other large orders were but of course we always track them we know where the other institutions are what they're in interested in doing and it's of my firmest belief that you would do better if you did the same just takes a little more homework it takes a little less trading, a little more preparation, a little more anticipation, and less reacting to the, you know, the, the, the extremes and the news events. You almost want to prepare yourself to do the opposite of what everybody is telling you to do. That's my advice, and I really hope that you take this and apply it going forward. So don't worry about 2019. If you got, if you followed... I mean, it'd be great. I mean, obviously, if you had 
if you had, remember, the same strategy, following smart money allowed me with confidence January 4th, 2019 to call for the buy the dip is in full effect. Buy the dip opportunities. For the entire year, there's been an opportunity to stay long. Not very many opportunities to get short. Now, going forward, you know, with global rates near negative, I do expect us to probably follow that trend in that direction of rates. So therefore, this private equity is going to have to deploy into equities. Those equities are probably going to lift the markets, right? So we're going to have to probably meander a little bit. My guess is that it's going to be like 2016, where it was just a grind up every single day, climbing the wall of worry. Trump's going to take us to war. Trump's going to you know, send us into a recession. Every single thing, every single news media outlet is trying to get you to do the wrong thing. Stop listening to them. Do yourself a favor for January 2020 and forward. Stop listening to them. Track the money. Track the order flow. If you do not know how, you can always look me up, Redbridge Capital Consulting. I offer a mentoring program. Um, ask for the white paper. This white paper will show you kind of the process that I talk about in detail. And, you know, it's not much more than that. It's understanding how the auctioning process works, how the market seeks value, how the market seeks liquidity, and how the, and how it's the market makers trap traders through through retail, you know, basically what I call a retail flush trap. It's kind of that's about it. So just remember, just because you weren't able to do it 2019 doesn't mean you can't do it again. Uh, there is that opportunity, as I mentioned. Uh, let's go back up here. Um, private equity that bought last December, October, August, October, November. They bought again in November. I would expect after this run into the new year straight up that they're gonna pause. When they pause, that's buy the dip opportunities because there's $1.5 trillion waiting to deploy. But don't take my word for it. For it, Do your own homework. There's risks in trading, leverage instruments, and in anything, there's risks in listening to me. So do, learn to do your own homework, and that's what I teach, is learn to do the process so that you can make the decisions on your own and own it. That's my message. Merry New Year. God bless you all. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Will you do your own homework, Marv?